Hey, what's up, Studs? Ryan here, m &R Productions, and welcome to Ask m &R, episode 161, the series where I answer your questions. All you have to do if you want your question answered on next week's episode is leave a question or comment or whatever in the comments section down below. Anyway, let's hop right into today's episode with some fun facts. On last week's episode, I commented fun fact very open-endedly, and I got a couple of fun facts to share with you guys. First up, from Carlos, he says, on LEGO commercials, they take apart the sets and play them in reverse to make it look like the kid is building it. This is correct, and they also don't build the thing piece by piece, right? So you see as they take that apart, it actually is taken apart in chunks and then obviously reversed back to make it look like it's being put together. So that was a pretty neat trick that LEGO uses to make their commercials and make it look like people are putting their models together instead of taking them apart, obviously. This is one that I did not know, though, from Emmett 501st. He says, the box art of the LEGO Star Wars 7101 lightsaber duel has a slightly different hilt piece than the one used today. And this is actually rather interesting because it is a really common piece nowadays that I don't think people knew way 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 back in the day it was a little bit different at least on the box art I don't think it came like that in the setting the lightsaber hilt has been the same but on the box art you can see that near the top near where the blade connects with the hilt it actually gets wider instead of more narrow at the top which is an interesting difference that Lego ended up changing on the final version of the lightsaber hilt that we now see today now our first actual question here from Brennan Kyle says why did they retire the 20th anniversary snow speeder so early knowing they were making at, at a year later. Not even a year later, just like seven or eight months after the retirement of the 20th anniversary Snowspeeder. On top of the fact that the 20th anniversary Snowspeeder was only available for about eight months to begin with, which is really, really short for a Lego Star Wars set's shelf life. Like, usually they're available for at least a year, if not closer to two. It was really surprising to see that set retire so fast, and some people pointed out, as a very astute observation, that, hey, it's a 20th anniversary set, and so having it available in 2020 means it's no longer this 20th anniversary and that's why they retired it. That is not why they retired it. They retired it apparently because they couldn't produce all of the pieces they needed to keep selling that set. So for what that's worth, that is apparently why it was retired. And as you may have also noticed during the year of 2020, the 21st year of Lego Star Wars, they continued to sell a few of the 20th anniversary sets. So it's not like just because it was a 20th anniversary set, they retired it because it was no longer this 20th anniversary. That wasn't the case never has been, never will be. It was just because apparently they could no longer produce some of the pieces with their production constraints. And that was pre-COVID existing too. That was just like a thing that they had already decided to do for whatever reason. It's really unfortunate because that was a perfect match made in heaven with the ATAT -AT that is now available. And I wish that Snowspeeder was still available. It would have made a lot of sense to keep that set out and even to this day still be selling it because it's still a perfect match made in heaven. That set should have had a three year shelf life, let's be honest. Davy Graham says, as a fellow AFOL in their early 20s, where do you go to meet other A-Falls, it's pretty rough, man. Well, if you're trying to meet people like in real life, it's going to be tough. Maybe you get lucky, meet a guy at the, the Target Lego aisle or whatever, but generally like you're not just going to find random people in your day-to-day -day life like that are into what you're into. That's just a general thing for a lot of things, right? You have to find a club, more so in Lego, it's a Lego user group, a, a lug, and you can find those around you. Um, if you go online, you should be able to find one in your area. Um, sometimes they might be a little far from you depending on how populated the area you live in, but most populated areas, especially in America will have a lug affiliated with them. And that's not necessarily going to mean they're exactly going to be people your age, but they're certainly going to be adults that are into what you're into. And that may be what you're looking for. But for me personally, I mean, a lot of the people I meet are obviously online, whether that be through Instagram or YouTube, just with the Lego thing, like it's a lot easier to meet people online in this particular space, I would say. Um, and I would recommend starting up maybe like an Instagram page or something like you can't meet people if people don't know who you are, if that makes sense, right? Like you have to like, to some degree, have have some presence. You don't have to have a lot of followers. You don't have to have anything like that. You just have to like make posts so people can say, hey, here's this guy. He's into what I'm into. Let's chat in DMs and then you become friends type of thing. Ben says, if you were to replace one set from the rumored summer wave, what set would you take out? And what would you replace it with? I think my change would be rather simple. I would really just swap that $50 Slave 1. And while I think the Slave 1 certainly has a place in LEGO Star Wars lineup long term, especially with the book of Boba Fett coming out very soon, I guess it makes a lot of sense. But for me personally, I would swap that to a Jango Fett Slave 1. It's been so long overdue. Jango Fett himself as a minifigure has become very expensive, so obviously it's desired at some level by people. And so, yeah, that would be the one change that I would make for this summer lineup is that I would take out the regular Slave 1 and replace it with Jango Fett Slave 1. We've had so many regular Slave 1s lately, it just doesn't make sense why we're getting another one so soon. 
Same can be said for the X-Wing and TIE Fighter, I suppose. But to me, the strength of this potential Slave 1 is if they keep it out for multiple years. Andres says, what is your opinion on the LEGO 90th anniversary vote? There's a lot of controversy around the inclusion and popularity of Bionicle and the inclusion of Castle in the second round by changing the rules. So for people that don't know, LEGO Ideas has been holding a multi-round vote to kind of decide what set should represent 90 years of LEGO for an anniversary set. I think that would come out next year, although don't hold me to that, I don't remember exactly. So the first round was like 30 themes and then it was supposed to be funneled into three themes and the three themes that went out were classic space pirates and bionicle and then lego actually went in and added a fourth theme in castle because they basically in the original vote had split up lego castle into like five or six different sub themes and they were like okay so all these sub themes got a ton of votes let's just put castle in which to me i think that's perfectly fine like lego changed the rules right but in a very sensible way it's just like another thing that a lot of people were clearly very interested and passionate about and like to me it just makes sense to have it there as an option at the very least to see how it does in the actual vote because it should have from the very beginning been combined into one theme and it very likely would have been in the top three had it been. So the Bionicle thing has gotten a little bit out of hand, I think. Like a lot of people are really toxic about it, but that's gonna be true of any community, right? You're gonna have people on far ends of the spectrum that are just absolutely insane about a thing. So I don't really have anything against that. Like like, like there's gonna be toxic people about Lego Star Wars, there's gonna be toxic people about Lego City. Like no matter what theme it is, no matter what's happening, and I don't think you can hold like a, a group or a fandom accountable for like the one percent of people that are insane and just like don't understand that it's just a for fun type of thing so at the end of the day i didn't vote i don't care to vote i don't really care which theme wins and i guess to contradict that i kind of hope Bionicle doesn't win in a way. So like, I see a lot of my friends that are Bionicle fans campaigning for this and I really like that and I enjoy it because I got to do that for a lot of LEGO Star Wars stuff recently and it's a lot of fun. And like, I hope they win. Like for them, I hope they win. But for the, the concept of the vote being to represent 90 years of LEGO, I don't think Bionicle does that very well because Bionicle doesn't use regular LEGO bricks. That's where the stopper is for me right there. Like Bionicle might be fine. All these stupid arguments about whether or not it will sell to me don't matter. Like I don't care if it's gonna sell well or not. It wins the vote, it wins the vote. But I don't think it represents Lego very well for 90 years of Lego, right? Because Lego uses Lego bricks and plates and tiles and stuff. And I know Bionicle is made of Lego, right? But it's more Lego adjacent to me. And obviously Bionicle people have their own opinions on that and that's perfectly fine. But I have never thought of Bionicle as Lego in the way that a lot of this stuff behind me is Lego. Much in the way that I don't think Lego Star Wars buildable figures are quite the same as all of those sets. And I think there's a very obvious disconnect there as to what they are and what they're trying to be and that's perfectly fine they can both coexist that's great but we'll see i'm very curious to see how it plays out because if bionicle wins i think a lot of people are going to be unhappy and if bionicle loses i think a lot of people on the other side are going to be very unhappy bobby versal studio says do you think lego star wars is getting stale not necessarily i think obviously lego is still doing a lot of things with star wars that a lot of people enjoy but they also shoot themselves in the foot in a lot of cases with a lot of these like really quick remakes and really just similar models and reuses of minifigures like there's so much that lego can do they are the ones that are making Lego Star Wars feel stale to you if that's the way you feel. I don't think that Lego Star Wars is inherently stale. That Like, there's still a lot of fresh stuff. I still find myself very excited about what's coming next and what has been happening over the last few years, especially with all the new movies and TV shows. Like, I don't know how you can say something is getting stale when there's constantly a stream of new stuff coming in. So, I would say no, but it does teeter dangerously on that line given how much new stuff they've had to work with and how much stuff they can do that they haven't done before that they're still not doing. This is a great one from Mr. Carl Burkhart here. He says, what is the furthest you would go to protect your Lego? I was so excited to get my medieval blacksmith set. It was delivered yesterday and within three minutes, thieves stole the delivery box off my porch. Like an idiot, I chased after them, confronted them, and got my package back. They were much less interested when I told them it's just a box of 2,164 <laughs> teeth. That's a good one. Um, so yeah, I, I'm sorry your package almost got stolen. I'm glad you were able to get it back. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. It's definitely an interesting hypothetical. Like, I definitely don't think I would like get my stud shooter out, so to speak. Um, because someone stole a box off my front porch, like that's probably on the far end of the spectrum. I, I really don't know how to answer this. Like, right? Like it, it's really situational, right? So like if I think the guy is dangerous looking, like that's gonna be met with a different reaction than like if it's an old grandma that walked up and took the package off the porch, you know, you just be like, ma'am, what are you doing? I just think it's gonna vary so much. I don't know, like how far would I go, I guess was the question. It depends on the value of the thing too. Like that's also another really good hypothetical, right? If it's my $20,000 golden C3PO, one of a kind, like 
I think I would go pretty far to make sure I keep that thing. So it's hard to know, but like, I really wanted to share this for your story because I thought that was interesting, but I don't think I have like a really straight answer to this, just other than that it's gonna vary depending on what I may or may not know is in the box and who the person is. But as a general rule of thumb, don't steal things from people. I know, what a concept. Your father says, do you think the UCS style sets should be applied to other themes? I think that would be awesome. Well, you must be living under a rock because it already is and it has been for what, um, 15 years now. I mean, they definitely uh, have been doing it at least since they literally called it, I believe, the Ultimate Collector Series Batmobile back in 2006 when they did a Batmobile Ultimate Collector Series set. I do have it in the garage. I just haven't built it yet. Uh, it'll be built in the future or whatever. But yeah, like that's already been happening. It still is happening. They did the Batwing and the Batmobile very recently in kind of the 18 plus lineup style and they are doing more like Hogwarts Castle. That's for all intents and purposes a UCS set. It's just not called a UCS set, right? So they're doing this for all types of themes and all of that stuff all of the time. I just think you've been living under a rock, man. Maybe you should open your eyes and check it out because there's some pretty cool stuff out there from other themes in the UCS style. They just don't call it UCS because that seems to, other than like the one-off Batmobile reference I can think of, been made uh, unique to the Star Wars lineup, kind of like with Star Wars The Black Series from Hasbro, right? Like they do other action figures for other themes kind of in a display-oriented thing or whatever, right? I believe at least. Um, but Star Wars specifically gets the Black Series branding and in Lego, that would be the Ultimate Collector Series. Basic Brick Mox says, why don't you light up your models? Honestly, I don't like the wiring. It's a bit of a pain. It gets in the way. And then you also have the battery box that has to go somewhere. And usually that's just going to dangle off the model. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't find any real value in lighting out the models. Yeah, it looks good, right? It can look good, especially in the dark. But for the most part, like I'm not going to use that. That's not a function I care about. I care about the Lego sets and I like them stock, right? I don't modify my sets. I maybe once every five years make a small modification to a set. If that, like, I very much like Lego sets to have the actual actual set, not for like the accessorization of it. Tada says, why are Lego Super Packs, two or more sets, so rare? Um, probably because they just aren't sold in a lot of places. I'm not really sure why they decide to sell them where they sell them. Like I've never seen a Super Pack at like a Target or Walmart, but I have seen uh, the Toys R Us. They had like the two-in-one Super Pack with the Ghost and the Phantom back in 2014. You just don't see them a lot in the States for sure. And that's part of the reason for the rarity. So if they're not in the United States, that's a big market for Lego Star Wars. That's a big chunk of people who would have been able to buy it that are no longer able to buy it. So these things that happen more so in Europe, I thought America got all the cool exclusives, at least that's what the people told me online. But these super packs tend to be a lot more not in America, and so for that reason, that's already like maybe, I don't know, half of the LEGO Star Wars fan base, if not more, um, that would be able to buy them that aren't, and therefore that automatically makes them twice as rare as any other thing. And on top of that, they're just available in limited quantities at limited stores. Like, I just, I don't know a lot about them. I don't really keep up with them, but they do them seemingly on a year-to-year -year basis a lot for LEGO Star Wars. I haven't done them so much recently, I don't think, um, other than like, with the battle packs, but they used to do them with bigger sets. And sometimes they would be even weird mixes with sets from different eras. So they were just like, hey, we want to pull all these sets in one box and sell them to you. It was like, I don't know, it was kind of a weird thing. But in a nutshell, they are rare because there are less of them and they are available in less places. BGS Plays says, how much Dogecoin do you own? I think I own an embarrassingly large amount. Let's check here on my Robinhood app. God, I feel bad saying that. I have 12,252 Dogecoin. I also have 0.001 Bitcoin. So yeah, I got a lot of Dogecoin. I bought it for relatively cheap. So I've made some decent money on it uh, over over time here. But um, yeah, it's nothing insane. Jonas Pearson says, what would be the best way to get the most out of your money when buying Lego? Should you buy multiple smaller sets or put all that money into one big set? I think you should buy the set you want, man. Um, I, I, this is a general rule of thumb. I see a lot of this and I don't subscribe to this theory, or at least like it gets applied to every situation I find myself in, even though uh, maybe it's not like the same people telling me this every time. So I don't think this is really a thing, but like the vibe I get is that everything you buy has to be the absolute best value and you have to get the absolute lowest price. Like just buy the thing you like, buy the thing you're gonna get the enjoyment out of. If you're like me, you might get a lot more enjoyment out of one $260 UCS Imperial Shuttle than you would out of the entire January slash March lineup of LEGO Star Wars sets. Now, obviously that set's retired, but if we add up the more modern uh, January slash March wave, I believe it costs somewhere around the same price. I think it's $240 plus tax. So you could just say they're about the same price, right? I think I would get a lot more enjoyment out of that set than I would out of like the six or seven sets that are much cheaper, obviously, but if you're going to buy a bunch of smaller sets and then you'd have a bunch more minifigs and stuff, but like, I, buy the set you're gonna enjoy. Everything you buy doesn't have to be the absolute best price or best deal ever on a thing. Just buy it because you like it. Like for example, if there's like a Lego City set that costs $30 and it has 10 minifigs, yeah, that's a great deal, great value. You're getting a ton of stuff. But if you don't like Lego City, you shouldn't buy it. 
you know? Like, just because it's a good deal doesn't mean you have to buy it. And so, just because it's not the best deal ever doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it in the case of like one big set versus multiple smaller sets. Now on the flip side of all of that, if you like both the big set and the multiple smaller sets, that's a little bit more nuanced, right? You're gonna have to make that decision for yourself as to which one you like more. But in general, like if one thing over the other is just like, hey, I love this, like why are you gonna go buy something you don't absolutely love just because it's a better deal. Ben says, do you think that the Lego Harry Potter theme will continue for decades similar to Star Wars or finish up once they made sets from the final films? So it's hard to know. I think Harry Potter still has some gas left in the tank, probably even five or so years to go. Like Harry Potter is pretty expansive and there's supposedly like a TV show or like streaming show uh, in the works. I want to say for HBO, but I don't remember. I just heard it like a couple weeks ago and I didn't really do much research on it. Doesn't really matter at this point. It's just like in the works, right? So yeah, um, it definitely there is more to come with Harry Potter, but as far as like Harry Potter in general, it's still very limited, right? And obviously the Fantastic Beasts has kind of flopped for Lego. Like those sets didn't do well and they have stopped making them. So they're just making making sets from the normal Harry Potter films. And there's only so many of those. There's only so many times they can keep doing the same thing, which is entirely possible. But I just, I don't know. I think Harry Potter maybe gets three to five more years and then they kind of phase it out. Maybe, I don't know, 10 years later down the road, they'll bring it back again. I don't see any reason they couldn't do something like that. But I don't think Lego Harry Potter has the type of thing where they can keep doing sets year over year for 20 or 30 years. Like Lego Star Wars is going to be able to do plus that, hopefully. I hope Lego Star Wars goes for my entire lifetime. I hope it never ends. And it's really kind of unprecedented for Lego to have done a theme and kind of eh, screwed around with it for a few years, did a couple sets, didn't do a couple sets, then skipped a bunch of years and then brought it back. And it's done really, well, as far as we can tell, right? Because they've released some like eight sets in one year, eight sets the next year. Now we've had a couple advent calendars. And now this year, I think they're releasing even more sets than they've ever released in any year before, at least in the more modern wave. So obviously it's doing well if they're releasing more sets because obviously they think people are going to buy them. So yeah, I think Lego Harry Potter is looking really strong right now. I'm just curious to see how long they can keep doing it. Maybe it's like a DC route where it'll kind of fizzle into just a couple sets a year with like Batman, right? So like could be something like that. Nate P says, why don't you open your Black Series? I also collect them and find them fun to mess around with and it kills me that you don't get to because you don't open them. So yeah, Nate, realistically, it's just what I want to do with them, right? Like I enjoy something in a way that maybe you don't enjoy it in the same way. And that's perfectly fine. You open yours. Oh my God, you ruined your box. Like, yeah, like I don't know. Like, I'm not going to get, give you that reaction. Like you enjoy it that way, right? Like that's great. And I enjoy it in a completely different way. And that's perfectly fine. I like the black series. The reason I started collecting it is because I thought they looked cool in the box. That's like, that's my thing. I've never liked action figures. I will probably never like action figures for the action part of the figure. I will just like them for the figure in the box and that's the way it's going to be for me. For you, it might be different and that's fine, but yeah, that's the way I enjoy them. Now I may end up buying duplicates of things in the future to be able to open and take a look at on my MNR Collects channel, but I'm certainly more apt to keep one copy of those sealed than I am with like Lego sets. Like I just, I feel like Black Series looks really good in the packaging and I'm very excited to be able to display it in the future like as part of my setup, like I think it's gonna look awesome. And that is gonna do it for Ask Him our Productions episode 161. If you guys enjoyed, a like would be greatly appreciated. If new to channel, make sure you subscribe and check out my MNR Collects channel as well because I'm posting my first video ever on there this Friday. And actually, uh, to go with Nate's last question there, it'll be unboxing my first ever Black Series figure. So check that out. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you later. Peace out.